The first steps to using breakout rooms in Zoom are updating your Zoom app and enabling breakout rooms. First, update Zoom. So launch the Zoom app on your computer and in the top right corner, click on your icon or initials and check for updates and click there. If you're prompted to update, go ahead and follow through if you have the time. And when you see you are up to date, you know you're ready to go. Next, in a web browser, go to stonybrook.zoom.us, click sign in, sign in with your NetID, NetID password, and then authenticate with Duo if needed. From here, click on settings and scroll to the breakout rooms section. In breakout rooms, you want to make sure it's enabled or blue. And to be able to pre-assign participants to breakout rooms, check the box for allowing hosts to assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling. Now I can either schedule a new meeting and add breakout rooms to that, or I can go to one of my existing meetings and add breakout rooms to that. This is true even if I created the meeting in Blackboard. So I have here a sample class and I scheduled a new reoccurring meeting and I called it Julie's test class Zoom link scheduled through Blackboard. And you'll see that when I sign into stonybrook.zoom.us and click on meetings, that session shows up in here too. And you can actually only pre-assign your breakout rooms in stonybrook.zoom.us. So find the meeting, click to edit that meeting. And then when you scroll down to the meeting options, you'll see the option to breakout room pre-assign. So if I check breakout room pre-assign, it gives me these options to create the rooms, import from a CSV. I'm gonna start off with create rooms. When I click on create rooms, there's nothing here yet except for a note that I can create up to 50 rooms and assign right now a total of 200 people. One of the first things you can do with pre-assigning breakout rooms is to simply create the rooms ahead of time so they're ready for you when you're in the actual meeting. I can click on the plus sign next to rooms and I've created my rooms here, however many I want. In this case, if I wanted to have each of my rooms with a specific topic, when I click on the room name, over here on the right side where it says breakout room 2, there's a pencil when I hold my mouse over it. If I click on the pencil, I can then change the topic. Click off and it saves. So I can do this for the rooms that I want to create ahead of time. And it just takes away some of the work I would need to do in the session. If I want to add participants to these rooms, I have a couple options here. I can start typing and find all the names of the participants that I want to add to each room here. You can only add internal or at stonybrook.edu accounts this way. In some cases, like adding external Zoom accounts, use the CSV option. So I'm gonna remove the participants I added. I wanna show you the CSV way. If you import, the room names will be overwritten, so you don't need to create room names first. So when I click on import from CSV here or in the earlier screen, I have this information here about what's required. It says it needs a breakout room name and the email address. Also gives me option to download a template and use that. So let's do that. I'm gonna download the template, click to open. It's a CSV file, which you can open in Excel or any spreadsheet program. And when I download that, I get this file here. So it's pre-populated some of the information for me. It's got pre-assigned room name and then a column for email addresses. I'll add in whatever room names I want to use here. And then I can, I can type or paste in email addresses. It's important to note that you can only pre-assign email addresses of Zoom accounts. For classes, you can go to Solar to download your class roster, for example, to make sure you have the right address and within Stony Brook, it's always the at stonybrook.edu email address. So once I've created my two columns here, the room name I want to assign to plus the email addresses and up to 50 rooms, up to 200 participants, I'm going to go to save as, I'm going to call it breakout rooms, room demo, and I want to make sure it's a CSV. Click on save. And once that is saved, I can go here to import from CSV file find that file on my computer on the desktop. There it is, drag it over, and my rooms will each be created with the participants I assigned. I'll click save on that, and then save on the meeting, and those pre-assignments are there. When I go to start the meeting, on the right-hand side is my participant view, Bob Smith, and the left-hand side is my host view. When I'm ready to open the breakout rooms, I would choose breakout rooms from the bottom or from the more menu. 
And if I've pre-assigned breakout rooms, I'll see those breakout rooms names. And anyone who's currently in the session and signed into the Zoom account I pre-assigned will show up in that room. If you used pre-assigned rooms simply to give the rooms a name, at this point you can click the gear and check the box to let participants choose their own rooms and then participants can go to the room as you named them. In this case, I didn't pre-assign Bob, the only participant in my meeting right now, so Bob doesn't show up anywhere. But if I want to assign him to topic A, I can click assign next to that room and then check the box next to that name. Or I can do the same to unassign that. So I have my rooms and if open them. You'll notice that there is this red circle with a number in it on the breakout room button or more and also in your breakout room menu. This is indicating how many people aren't assigned to a room. Whenever you see that, you'll know there's someone you need to go in and assign to a room. So here I can go to this unassigned section. I can click next to the person I want to assign, click on assign to and choose which room I want to assign that person to. And then you'll see, because I didn't send everyone automatically to the room, my participant will see a message with the option to go to that room. I'm not going to have the person go right now. And you'll notice that there is a little menu my participant sees here at the bottom that shows where he can click when he's ready to go to the breakout room on that more option. I'll also see on my screen that Bob Smith hasn't joined that room yet. I'm going to close the rooms now and that will bring everyone back to the main room if they've left. And I want to point out the options under recreate. So when you have pre-assigned breakout rooms and you click recreate, you'll have the option to recover to pre-assigned rooms. This will refresh the way you pre-assigned it, even if you've moved people around in the meantime. So when I choose recover to pre-assigned rooms and I say, yes, I want to, it's telling me everything I've done on my screen now is going to be replaced. And when I click yes, you'll see where I started off again. The other option under recreate is recreate all rooms. And when I click on that, it's going to bring me the default creation screen. You see, if you haven't pre-assigned rooms, one of the things I can do is use the assign automatically to create another configuration. So let's say I've pre-assigned breakout rooms, but I want to have another mix, another way to group up my class. I can use assign automatically and choose how many rooms I want. And if I click recreate here, I'm going to get a different configuration of my participants. It's going to give me the default room names rather than the rooms that I set up in pre-assigned breakout rooms but it's another way to mix things up. The other thing I can do is choose the option to let participants choose a room under recreating all rooms. And when I do this, I'll get my default room names, the number I specified here, and no one will be assigned to a room. But when I click to open all rooms, my participants, if they're on a supported device, they'll be prompted to choose a room. In this case, Bob Smith is joined in a web browser and Web browsers can't pick their own breakout rooms. So in this case, I'll need to assign anybody who didn't choose their own room or couldn't choose their own room. I'll need to assign them from the unassigned section to the room, and then they'll see the option to join that breakout room from their screen. For more on other ways to work with the breakout rooms regarding communication, uh, moving people around, renaming, you can see our other video on breakout rooms. And that's pre-assigned breakout rooms.